how does one describe your splendor when your majesty eludes our words still we bow down in awe and awesome wonder and we cry out glory Your name in all the earth. Gloria. You're so glorious. Gloria. Gloria. Is your name in all the earth? Holy God of all creation. You bring life. Show the hope, show the dream, everything that's meant to be. When you shine on me, shine on me. Show the hope, show the dream, everything that's meant to be. When you shine on me, shine on me. 
Good evening, and welcome to our 2020 Boys Ranch Baccalaureate service. It has been a long-standing tradition to come together as a community for our baccalaureate service to honor our graduates in Christ's name. In particular, we gather at this time each year to thank God for our school and pray a blessing over our graduates. For this reason, we thank you for joining us. It is now my pleasure to introduce Karma Koski, our 2020 salutatorian, who will be leading us in prayer.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come together with my family and fellow students and faculty of Boys Ranch High School. Your word ensures us, where two or more are gathered in your name, there you will be also. Father, I want to thank you for that. Even though this is an unusual time in our lives and there are times we don't know who to listen to, I thank you for never changing and always giving us the clarity in this walk we call life. Father, I ask you that you bless this time we have in a virtual ceremony and allow us to feel your presence because I know I wouldn't be here without you and your guidance. Father, please keep your hand on each of us as we begin our walk in the real world. I know as we step out on our own, we may feel isolated, but Father, help us remember that you are always there in every endeavor. Father, now please bless this day and bless each of us as we continue to grow in you and follow our dreams in life. Father, thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We come together here each Sunday morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We are a colorful group. We represent different ages, different interests, and different backgrounds. We represent different beliefs and different values. Some of them are pretty good, and some of them maybe aren't so good. One thing we know for sure, none of us here are perfect. Many of us here have come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We believe he died for our sins, was buried, and after three days rose again from the dead. We believe he ascended into heaven and generously poured out his Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of his believers. We believe his Holy Spirit is a very powerful and mysterious reality. And we believe that he will return again one day to bring salvation to those of us who are eagerly waiting for him. We are told that Jesus came to set us free. Many of us here believe that. We believe he came to set us free from every addiction. We believe he came to set us free from harmful relationships. We believe he came to set us free from the trap of unforgiveness, the garbage we harbor toward others, and the self-hatred we often have for ourselves. Probably not everyone here has believed this good news. Some resist, others are reluctant, but perhaps curious. And yet all of us here, each week, are learning to respect each other as we share our laughter and our lives together. For that, we are grateful. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Class of 2020, it's my privilege to say congratulations, and it's an honor to share a few words with you uh, for your baccalaureate service this year. Um, you're about to leave a world of rodeos and baby goats and, of course, uh, Mrs. Jones' world-famous Oreo fluff dessert. You're about to leave that world for another world. It doesn't take a genius to notice that one of these two worlds is a bit more what we call the real world than the other, right? But it takes a pretty sharp eye to notice which one it is. This Boys Ranch world that you're leaving is a hidden cove of natural beauty. We're guarded by a royal detachment of cottonwood trees. They're dark green in the summer, and they turn a creamy gold in the fall. You've often heard their gentle applause as you've walked from the high school to the sports complex. And they're known to show off a spectacular winter wardrobe whenever we get one of our magical January snow days. Most of you girls know what the green carpet of summertime grass around your home feels like beneath your bare feet cross-country runners like Ebony and Joseph have spent many an early morning running before a, a quiet, curious audience of Texas white-tailed deer. And any of you who have ever had to go to early morning workouts, which is most of you, right, uh, you know what it's like to walk up to the sports complex early in the morning and to your immediate left there is this stunning rosy orange swirl of a sunrise just trying to grab your attention. Some of you have held baby goats at Mr. Nation's farm. Or maybe you've pulled a flopping catfish onto the slick muddy bank of Smallwood Lake. Many of you know several horses here by name. Gus, Cowboy, General, Skip just to name a few. And, and all of us have bef beheld the ever-changing rainbow beauty of the famous Boys Ranch flower beds cared for with love by Mrs. Goodson and her cheerful work crews. You're about to leave this world for quite another. The world you're about to enter, or, or shall I say re-enter, is constructed with plaster, plastic, and steel. You walk on concrete and drive on asphalt beneath the canopy of fluorescent lights. It's a world dominated by a cold landscape of flat screens and machines. So graduates, it seems you are actually now leaving the real world for a world that's quite a bit more artificial. As you know, the Boys Ranch world is inhabited by a, a peculiar community of human beings like the house dads who will deliver necessary items to the school for forgetful students during the school day, or uh, teachers who give countless second chances to complete assignments or retake important tests, or work mentors who emphasize important values like dependability and punctuality, who at the same time seem to have the patience and grace to bear with those who take longer to learn such lessons. Coaches with the fortitude to lead programs built on character, who have the courage to confront wayward athletes, looking them square in the eye for hard conversations, not, however, to condemn or to banish, but to teach and to restore. House moms who will sit up late at night in the office to listen to a struggling kid who just needs to be heard. The world of Boys Ranch is a community that tends to look past the mask that you're often wearing to see the, the real you deep down inside. A unique human being created in God's image. It's a community that pulsates with love and forgiveness on your behalf, always striving to work for your good though admittedly often missing the mark. 
a kingdom pulsating with love and forgiveness is what Jesus calls the, the kingdom of heaven. The network of human relationships ordained by God that is real and everlasting. You're leaving this world for a world that is usually not so loving and definitely not so forgiving. You know, if you oversleep and miss work, you get fired, and that's that. Your value will largely be determined by what you can do for others. Companies will use you. Individuals might take advantage of you. False friends will tempt you to waste your money, use other people, and break the law. So graduates, like I said, you're now leaving the real world for a world that, to put it in other ways, quite a bit more fake. You're leaving a world that has a, a striking white steeple in its center. Its single point invites our gaze upward to the heavens as a witness to the one true God, creator of heaven and earth. Your time at Boys Ranch, it's been marked by a 30-minute pause each midweek for prayer and to hear the scriptures and a, and a one-hour gathering on Sunday morning to worship the creator of heaven and earth. You may not have understood it at the time. Maybe you still don't. And you might not have always liked it. But the chapel at Boys Ranch stands as a faithful witness to the one true real thing. You're leaving the reality of this world to a world that worships many false gods. Money, sex, careers, peer groups, celebrities, political groups, just to name a few. So graduates, like I've been saying, you are now leaving this real world of Boys Ranch for a world that can be quite a bit more false, quite a bit more artificial, and quite a bit more fake. Like Cain said Sunday, you're not going to the real world. You're actually leaving the real world. And still, you might be surprised to know that this world that you're going to, this common world, it's no less real than Boys Ranch, but it's sort of like a carnival funhouse. It has a lot more hazards, shadows, illusions, distortions. These hazards will lead you astray and drain the life right out of you if you let them. So this is really important. Let me tell you what you need to do to survive. You need to connect to the real world as it is happening outside of Boys Ranch. And you can start by making a regular habit to connect with your real habitat. Get outside away from the flat screens and notice the trees and the flowers. Spend time in your backyard. Go hike the canyon. Watch a sunset. And make time to feel the grass beneath your feet. Second, connect with a real community. <laughs> Surround yourself with responsible people <clears throat> who are being real with themselves and with others. Stay in contact with your role models at Boys Ranch. Be kind to everyone, but be picky about who you associate with. Remember, false communities are easy to find, and they're known for their irresponsibility. Avoid them at all cost. And strive to know God. His evidence has been on display in these past few years of your lives in the cottonwood trees and the sunrises and the horses and the, the baby goats. God's love and forgiveness has been expressed through your house parents and your teachers and your coaches, caseworkers and work mentors. So let me say it again. You must avoid the many temptations of the fake world as you leave Boys Ranch and connect with the real world in order to survive. <clears throat> Class of 2020, it's been my privilege to know each of you and serve as your senior chaplain. Thank you for sharing your life with me. I can assure you that I am the better for it. I've seen the image of God in each of you, and it's my hope that each of you chooses life. So please avoid the false things of the common world and connect with the real world out there, just as you experienced it with us here at Boys Ranch. 
And now let me let you in on a little secret. It's my wild hope that each of you does more than just survive. I hope that you will thrive. In other words, I hope you'll discover a life full of joy, adventure, and meaning. The kind of life you'll look back on one day and be glad you had. And here's how you do it. You do it by participating in bringing the real world to others. Be responsible. Have the compassion to look past the masks that people wear to see them as children of God. Serve God by serving others with a sacrificial love that is always ready to forgive. Take family seriously. Get married, then have children. Then remain faithful to your family as a spouse and as a parent. Be responsible with your finances and always say thank you. In other words, you put into practice the love of Jesus Christ that you saw modeled here by your teachers, your coaches, your counselors and caseworkers, your work mentors, and most of all, your house parents. This is the key to living a meaningful life that makes the world a more real place for others. My friend uh, Lesma was a kid out here at Boys Ranch a few years ago. A few of you will remember her, and she would often write poems that she would share at the end of chapel. She wrote this poem. I wanted to share it in closing because I think it says it best. It's called Love Anyways. Have you ever experienced a death so strong it changed your emotions, feelings towards anyone or everyone? I just want you to know, let not your heart be troubled. Listen to this and actually think about it. Some people are often unreasonable and self-centered but forgive them anyways. If you're kind and people accuse you of selfish motives, just be kind anyways. If you are honest but people cheat you, remember to be honest anyways. If you find happiness, people may be jealous, but be happy anyways. If you do good today and it's forgotten by tomorrow, do good anyways. Just give the world the best you can. Even if it seems it will never be good enough, give it your best anyways. Because at the end of it all, it's just between you and God. It was never between you and them anyways. Now what does that mean? Thinking about every word, syllable, verb that I just said, when God said, and I'm quoting from the Bible, I am the way the truth, and the life. He will show the way and tell you the truth and help you enjoy life. And when death comes, he does not want your heart to be troubled. He wants to help you through it all. So I have one thing to say. Remember that at the end of everything you do, we do. It is between you and him in the end. Amen. I can see it in your eyes that you are restless. The time has come for you to leave. It's so hard to let you go But in this life I know You have to be Who you were made to be And as you step out on the road I'll say a prayer So that in my heart You'll always be there
just I love you to take with you until you're home again. The stirring in your soul has left you Just remember that your dreams, they are a promise That you were made to change the world So this is not goodbye I know we'll meet again So let your life begin Cause this is Just I love you to take with you until you're home again. Yeah. So this is not goodbye. I know. Just I love you to take with you until you're home again. Greetings to all of you guys and girls, I'm so grateful to have a few moments this morning to speak to you. And first of all, just to congratulate you on this wonderful milestone that, that you have successfully reached, your, your high school graduation. Congratulations to you, along with all of the ranch, I send my congratulations. In just a few days, you're going to be receiving a, a Bible in the mail and it will have your name beautifully embossed on the cover. But when you receive it, I'm sure your eyes will immediately be drawn to your name on the Holy Scriptures. But I would also like for you on that day when you receive the Bible to look at the binding, to look at the spine of the Bible. And I would like for you to remember something. I would like to ask you to not only read but study these words. And I'd like to ask you to underline scriptures and highlight scriptures. And of course, most importantly, live out the teachings that are here in the Word of God. But as you do that through the years, as you read and study, your Bible will eventually wear out. It will come apart. It reminds me of a statement that my grandmother made to me many years ago. She said, how a Bible falling apart usually belongs to a person who isn't. And I believe that she was correct in what she was saying. So let me encourage you to read and study, to underline and highlight in the days and weeks and months and years to come. And let's follow the advice of the psalmist as he tells us in chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Oh, the joys of those who do not know the advice of the wicked and who do not stand around with the sinners or join in with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees that are planted by the river bank, bearing fruit each season, and their leaves never wither. And in all that they do, they prosper. Amen. Uh, 
Friends, the most important thing we do each year with our baccalaureate service is we gather as a community to pray blessing over our friends in Christ's name. So class of 2020, I'd like to invite you to receive this prayer. And the rest of you who are part of this service or are watching, um, I'm going to we're going to put the words of this prayer up on the screen, and I would like to ask you to please pray with your hearts and your minds along with us at this time for the class of 2020. Would you pray with me? Loving God, thank you for the class of 2020. Thank you for giving us the privilege of serving them in your name. Thank you for teaching us more about your perfect love for us through every smile and every tear. Prepare us now to release our friends into your capable hands. Mend their wounds and give them courage. Give them grace to forgive those who may have failed them. And remind us often of the hope we have in you. In Christ's name, amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and all your many blessings. Thank you for the lives that we lead and the friends we make along the way. Lead us in the way that is right and kind and loving and show us to care for one another as you do. And thank you for the opportunities that we have. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.